everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Carly first of all I just want to say thank you for all the support on the Parkersburg video all of the kind comments the people coming to share their stories and to the new subscribers thank you so much I am endlessly grateful to have a platform where I can talk about these things and people can come and share their stories so Today we are going to continue the Tornadoes Around the World series. I had so much fun researching for and creating the Tornadoes in Asia video that I did a month or two back. So I thought it would be really nice if we continued exploring the topic today. Uh, before we talk about anything else, I want to give a huge shout out and a big thank you to our friend in Germany, Henny. When I very first started writing for a new video, I got this email. Uh, and inside this email from Henny was an extraordinarily detailed list of tornadoes in Europe, most of which I would not have been able to find or translate by myself. So that is uh, so much information to have parsed through and curate. So thank you, Henny. That was incredibly kind of you. And we're going to be basing a lot of what we're talking about today from Henny. So thank you so much. So with all that, let's take a look at some of these fascinating tornadoes in Europe, how and why they happen, and some of these social implications behind them that you might not think about. When we look at the climatology of the tornado prone regions around the world, you'll notice that we've talked about a couple of them already on this channel. And for a lot of the tornado alleys around the world, there are several different geographic features that are similar to ours here in the United States that do make it more prone to tornadic activity. To be specific, the United States infamous tornado alley is defined by a mountainous region to the west, the Rocky Mountains, cooler air that comes from the north, and an abundance of moisture that feeds in from the Gulf of Mexico. And while there's absolutely no place on earth like the American Tornado Alley, there are a few places that do mimic this setup. The first one being the mountain ranges and plains. We're going to be looking at the Alps and Apennine Mountains, in addition to the plateaus and lowlands, which are just north of those mountains. The second main thing to note here is that Western Europe has an abundance of seas that surround the area. From the North and Baltic seas to the Mediterranean and many more, they all provide the ample moisture, which is a critical element for tornado formation. Now, on top of the basic geographic layout, we're also going to be talking about some critical elements that come together in specific times of year that really allow for the magic to happen and for tornadoes to be able to form. SLIM is an acronym for the main four ingredients that are needed for tornado formation. They are shear, lift, instability, and moisture. And we've already covered a couple of these basic elements. The moisture comes from the surrounding seas in Western Europe. Instability comes from the rising temperatures in the summer months wind shear comes from those westerly winds and the lifting of the storms typically comes from those clashing of air masses with storm systems and these are the ingredients that can help produce supercell thunderstorms which can produce tornadoes obviously i'm really oversimplifying the entire process which is extremely detailed and intricate um, but i want to keep it as simple as possible just to paint a picture of the general idea so what we get from all these elements coming together, the geographic features, the external factors, the culmination of all these things brings us to an area in Northwestern Europe that is a lot more prone to tornadic activity. It's Europe's tornado alley. And you'll see this when you look at a map of tornadoes in Europe, you'll note there's a greater concentration over Germany in Northwestern Europe. These are the areas that frequent tornado activity but it's also equally important in talking about these more tornado prone regions to also clarify that a large swath of Europe still gets tornadoes. Now, overall, the tornadoes in Europe are a lot shorter lived than tornadoes in the United States and a lot less intense than the really wicked EF4, EF5 tornadoes, record breaking tornadoes that we see here in the States. But that's not to say they can't still be intense and they can't still be long-lived and deadly and very violent. They can. It's just a lot more anomalous for those kinds of events to happen. Okay, I've rambled on enough, I think. Let's take a look at some of these tornadoes. Germany, as we looked at earlier, has some of the most 
tornadoes in all of the countries we're going to look at today. With an average of 20 to 60 tornadoes per year and some of those even getting in the violent range, Germany sees some pretty intense tornadoes. On Friday, May 22, 2022, a severe weather outbreak wreaked havoc over Western Europe, with damage spanning all the way from Prague into France. But by far the most intense damage being several tornadoes that tore through Germany. At least one man was killed with another 40 injuries as several towns were raked over by these tornadoes. Und wir sehen den ersten Tornado in And despite a distinct funnel cloud being present with debris going through the air, it would take the German Weather Service quite some time before confirming the tornado and issuing a tornado warning, which is not uncommon as we're going to discuss. Uh, a lot of times with these countries, they're not going to issue a tornado warning unless there is a confirmed tornado on the ground. They don't really have much of a warning time at all. So in many cases, people genuinely don't know that they're about to be hit until it's already happening. The tornadoes in Paderborn and Lippstadt would be given EF2 ratings, which again for Germany is pretty intense damage. And looking at the photos, you can see how substantial this damage is to a lot of the areas. The ganze Rathausplatz liegt da vorne. Dicke Bäume, Äste, alles abgebrochen. Hier sind alle Häuser im Arsch. Scheiße! Das ist dein Auto? Nein, nein, Gott sei Dank nicht. <laughs> One thing I want to say though is that for this event, the forecasters from the Weather Service really nailed it. They actually issued a high risk of level three for severe weather over Germany, and they mentioned tornadoes in the forecast, which definitely verified. But I have to wonder how many people pay attention to those sorts of outlooks. Um, it's kind of similar to how how I often wonder how many people look at the SPC maps to see if they're in like a moderate or high risk. I don't generally think that people pay attention to that sort of thing. So it makes me wonder how many people pay attention to these level three um, sort of really high risk days in Germany and in Europe in general. The next one we're going to be looking at is really interesting. I think you guys are going to enjoy this one. On June 5th, 2016, a severe weather outbreak impacted several countries throughout Western Europe with multiple confirmed tornadoes as far north as Denmark, throughout Germany, and even down into Italy and Romania. But the most curious part of this outbreak, however, were the twin tornadoes that appeared in Northern Germany. <laughs> Thank you. 
Fortunately, there were no fatalities or major damage that occurred to any of these towns, considering the tornadoes largely went over rural areas. The highest rated tornado from this smaller outbreak would be an F1, which was also given a T2 rating on the Toro scale. And interestingly enough, I didn't see a rating anywhere for the twins. It's possible that they, although they were visually confirmed, they didn't ever get properly surveyed, um, but I couldn't find any official rating for them. Next, we're looking at yet another tornado outbreak in Germany. May 5th, 2015, multiple tornadoes strike towns east of Hamburg. Only this time, the tornadoes are pretty intense. Two F1 tornadoes, one EF2, and a remarkable EF3 or T7 rated tornado that occurred in Butzor. Da hinten geht's los, ja. Aber guck das mal an. Guck mal über den Rüner See. Der ist reingeknallt. Ja. Ach du Scheiße. Der ist rein. Da. Der hat sie raus. And one thing I'd like to point out here, this is something that Henny and I discussed in emails. This specific tornado is a really good example of people not really understanding what's going on. In this tornado specifically, there are people who are standing by a window, literally about to be hit by the tornado, and they're saying, quote, I have immense pressure on my ears, uh, to which the next person says, uh, me too. And this was, again, as the tornado is about to hit. Based on this Toro rating, a T7 means that the winds were estimated between 187 and 212 miles per hour, which is considered strongly devastating. In total, this outbreak would injure over 30 people, claim one life, and devastate numerous homes. You can see from the pictures, fairly significant structural damage had occurred, with 16 homes in Butsuo specifically being uninhabitable after the storm, and a multitude of roofs were gone on top of that. This tornado specifically went through the heart of the city, so by the next morning, the church roof was destroyed, cars were smashed alongside the road, there was a ton of debris and power lines across the road that had to be cleaned up, and the city decided to open up emergency accommodations with 300 beds, and that seems like a lot because I think the emergency services didn't really know how to deal with a stronger level tornado. I think they anticipated that a lot more than 16 homes would have been destroyed and a lot more people would need accommodations. I think it's um, better to be overprepared than underprepared, but 
generally speaking, they handled everything really well. And I think seeing this sort of outbreak for a lot of Germans must have been pretty frightening. Now we're going to move on and look at some tornadoes in Italy. And while I know it's going to come as no surprise that water spouts are incredibly common off the coasts of Italy, actually the mainland sees some pretty intense tornadoes as well. Let's take a look. July 8th, 2015 is another example of a severe weather day that only produced one tornado, but that tornado was incredibly violent. Around 3.30 p.m. on July 8th, a tornado touches down in Mida, Italy. The tornado was fairly short-lived, but the intensity is immediately apparent. <laughs> One person would lose their life with another 72 sustaining injuries, at least three of which were critical. A few days later, several professionals from the ESSL would investigate the path of the storm and later found it to be a shocking EF4 rated tornado. The tornado had an average length of 700 meters, which is almost half a mile wide, and a maximum width of 1,000 meters, which is a little over half a mile in width. This is one of the tornadoes we're going to talk about today that really kind of took me by surprise. I know that a lot of inland areas of Europe can see violent range tornadoes, but I didn't really expect it in Italy. Um, and the level of damage here is just kind of incredible. But the amount of injury um, and the fatality in such a short period of time really only attest to the incredible violence that this storm had. So now we're going to move on to another country that you might not expect to have more intense tornadoes, but actually Poland has seen several. On August 15th, 2008, the European Storm Forecast Experiment issues a level three risk for storms, which is essentially a high risk. And notably, they put out really strong wording here that is typically never used. It says, quote, tornado outbreak is currently underway across southern and central Poland, possibly Slovakia, expected to continue through the evening. And this risk was very much warranted. Not one, but three F3 or T7 rated tornadoes caused major damage through a swath of southern and central Poland. Hey, 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 see ya. Oh, come on, come One of the F3 rated tornadoes near Pilka caused two fatalities, one from a building collapse and the other from a fallen tree, and over 40 injuries along with over 400 damaged residents and farmsteads. The tornado would last for just over 60 minutes, most of that time being at F3 intensity with a 60 kilometer width. 
And this is really major for a tornado outbreak, essentially, of this magnitude for multiple tornadoes of F3 intensity to have gone through Poland is really pretty anomalous. Um, and again, this is one of situations where Poland is a lot less equipped and prepared to deal with these stronger type damaging tornadoes compared to how we are here in the United States where we have ample resource. We have tornado warnings that are 20 plus minutes in a lot of cases. Um, we have watches and all sorts of different things. Um, to be honest, I'm not even sure that any of these people had a tornado warning. In most of these videos, you aren't hearing tornado sirens. So it makes you wonder how prepared the general person was on this day. Another instance of a smaller yet fairly intense outbreak happened on July 14th, 2012 in Poland with multiple damaging tornadoes. One in particular in Barlowitzki that would be rated F3 or T6. Jeszcze raz, na jakim odcinku są te utrudnienia w połączeniach kolejowych? Bydgoszcz i? Byd, Bydgoszcz, Tczew, ten, ten kierunek tutaj. Czyli na trakcji kolejowej właśnie znajduje się silos zbożowy, który no, przeleciał w 500 metrów i zerwał linię trakcyjną. And unfortunately, another fatality would occur in a separate tornado that was also rated F3 in the areas of Stara when the tornado tore through a smaller village. Another five people would be injured here. And when you look at the damage, you see that these tornadoes were strong enough to flip cars, destroy several dozens of buildings. And despite going over rural areas, the, they still managed to cause so much destruction in such a small amount of time. Next, we are going to take a look at some Russian tornadoes. And naturally, because Russia is so massive, it has the largest number of inland tornadoes in Europe. But again, we have to note that there undoubtedly are a lot of tornadoes that go through rural parts of Russia that are never documented, we're never gonna know about, they just happened, and that's it. We don't even know. The next outbreak we're going to take a look at shows yet another incredible display of power with tornadoes spanning from France into Germany, Sweden, Estonia, Belarus, and of course, Russia. But the one we're going to focus on right now is a tornado that tore through Andreapol. On Monday, August 22nd, 2021, last year, an F3 rated tornado moved through Andreapol, Russia, damaging 65 homes and completely destroying three.
three people would lose their lives in this single tornado on top of another 10 injuries. And not only is the footage here really shocking and disturbing, you look at the trees that are snapped and debarked and the, the path that's carved through by this tornado is just unreal. This is one of the tornadoes that you look at the aftermath similar to ones in America and you just kind of know that this is in the upper echelon of tornado intensity with the way that the trees are just snapped off. And again, this kind of video makes me question how many tornadoes go through Russia that are of this intensity that are just never, that never hit anything, that are never surveyed or detected, just completely unknown. All right, now moving on, we're going to take a look at a tornado in the Czech Republic. And this next one is one of the more intense ones we're going to talk about today, one of the most devastating. On June 24th, 2021, in Southern Czech Republic, a single tornado moves through South Moravia. <laughs> Just after 5 p.m., this F4 rated tornado would devastate multiple towns. The twister moved through South Moravia, destroying roofs, totally smashing cars, forests destroyed, crops and farmland and animals are all taken out. And by the time the tornado lifts, over 200 people are injured and six people have lost their lives. <laughs> Moje zlaté auto je tady, moje stříbrné, na hromádce. Jestli je to moje. Já nepoznám, jestli je to moje. Tady těch aut je víc. This particular outbreak in Europe uh, was relatively small, yet really packed a punch. It's not the kind of tornado that you would necessarily expect in the Czech Republic, in South Moravia. It's just horrific. Of course, this type of storm, this type of tornado is a lot more anomalous to the area, but just absolutely awful to try to imagine the kind of the sort of devastation that these smaller towns face when they go through an event like this. The next one we're going to look at comes from the Netherlands, and this is actually an event that occurred a little over a month ago in June of this year, 2022. The Netherlands is a lot like the United Kingdom in that the frequency of tornadoes is there, but the intensity is not. The Netherlands, while they have seen some more violent tornadoes in the past, not very many at all, uh, but this next one is extremely photogenic. Jesus. 
Ik denk dat we wel eventjes de plantjes van tafel kunnen halen. Daar komt ie. Kijk eens. Ja, de deur gaat even dicht. Now this tornado would ultimately be given an F1 rating and although it wasn't that intense, it did still cause one fatality. The nature of that fatality, I'm not sure, but this tornado was very heavily photographed. There are a ton of videos online. And one of the interesting things about this event is how many people are so nonchalant about this tornado. Um, people are still outside when this tornado is passing through. There's even an image I saw online of children playing in a playground with the tornado very, very visible behind them. This kind of goes back to the idea that sometimes people will underestimate how powerful a tornado is based on the way that it looks, whether or not they perceive that it's going to be something strong, whether or not it's like a wide wedge tornado or a dark colored tornado. But it's really interesting because um, people are still very much outside and taking pictures of this, even though the tornado is, in some instances, very close to them. So now that we've looked at some examples of tornadoes throughout different countries in Europe, we're now going to dive into the differences between the European and American systems, the ratings, and generally the mentality and behaviorisms towards tornadoes. Since I don't have first-hand experience on how tornado warnings work in Europe, I'm going to be referencing a conversation that Henny and I had in emails about how tornado warnings are treated in Germany specifically, and I'll also be using published research that I found online as well. Now in Germany, the Netherlands, and Cyprus, tornado warnings are issued on the basis of observation, as we've already mentioned, and that's what Henny attested to. In Estonia, Romania, and Turkey, tornado warnings are based on radar data, in which case the lead time is 20 to 30 minutes. That's kind of similar to how we do it in the United States. It's radar indicated typically. Now, many times, like in Spain, a tornado warning is included within a severe thunderstorm warning where they will mention that a tornado is possible. Other countries in Europe will specifically state that because tornadoes are such a rarity in their area, they just don't have tornado warnings at all. And on top of all of that, and this part is really critical, the European National Meteorological Services do not hold comprehensive tornado warning concepts or procedures for any tornado warnings. So all I ask for when we look at some of these videos of people in different countries and different areas that are experiencing events like tornadoes, that are less common for them. Let's keep in mind that there are people who are significantly less exposed to what needs to happen during a tornado because as Americans, it's really sort of beaten into our heads from the time that we're little. These aren't things that other people really are familiar with in other places. And you know what? Should there ever be an earthquake where I live in the southeastern part of the United States and I recorded <laughs> how I behaved during that earthquake. I promise you people in Japan who are experts at dealing with earthquakes would look at that video and be absolutely horrified wondering what I'm doing. And overall, one of the main things I really want to hammer home today by showing all these videos of intense tornadoes in areas in Europe and before showing them in China, I hope we can stop perpetuating some of these really honestly dangerous rhetoric around tornadoes. There's still such a mentality of, oh, it never happens here because we live in a protected region, or, well, it can't happen in December because it's winter time, or it can't happen in a mountainous region, it can't happen near a river. These are really dangerous stereotypes to have about tornadoes, and I just really hope that by talking about it, if even just a few people, if we can stop some of that dangerous rhetoric, then I will be happy. And I understand it's not easy uh, to convince people that things that they were taught their entire lives are not true. I mean, I still see people talk about heat lightning almost every single day. <laughs> I'm quite naked. I think that's what they say, isn't it? Naked. 
uh, Henny, if you are here in the comments, again, thank you so much for your contribution to today's video. I also want to say that I see and hear all of you when you say you want to send me stuff. If you want to send me anything, if you want to send me videos or um, photos, if you just want to share your story, anything you want to send over, please send it over to my email, which I'll have linked. Also, you can follow my Twitter if you want more frequent updates from me. I'm going to be putting some extra clips that didn't make the final cut, but that were too good to take out of this video. So stick around for those. I think that's everything. Undoubtedly, there's something I probably forgot along the way. I always do that. But yeah, that is today's video. Thank you all so much for being here. I truly, genuinely appreciate it. That's all I have for you guys. I will see you all in the next one. Bye. There are some similar. <laughs> la, 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 la. It ha it can't be that simple. Possibly some lack. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> Experiment. God, that does not roll off the tongue. <laughs> What is this writing, Carly? What did you write? What is this? Are you okay? How am I to use Sayo? Oops, Sayo? Okay. Barlewiczki. 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 <laughs>